Good morning, everybody. Let's get some charts up here. So a little bit of a wild reversal yesterday, depending on where you look. Uh, the day before yesterday was pretty convincing. Yeah, awesome. Glad you enjoyed that. Um, so starting with the S&Ps, you know, what went down was on the support, which we talked about. And, you know, because of the, the gap up and then the gap down and the move down, you know, we looked to the left, you know, Foundation 101, look to the left, is there support there? and it was. And so, you know, there was some bottoming price action there, but the depth of retracement, which we can see a little more clearly. Hmm. Oh, shoot. Wrong chart. What do you know? Too many charts. Give me a sec. Thanks, McGraw. I guess after all these years, they all start looking the same. <laughs> Kidding. So it was, I was talking about the spy chart and, um, you know, the gap up and then the, the gap down, which is a short term bearish uh, pattern. And prices had pulled back down to support. Now, when we see prices retrace 100% back toward major support, it's weakness because strong trends don't pull back to major support. Well, this one held. Right? This is kind of the new normal with this market. I'm kind of hopeful that it would come down to this level, but step by step, of course. And we had this... Uh, Hard to see there, but we can look at the smaller time frames. It was a gap down, and the buyers just, you know, they just went after that like their lives depended on it. That was, was it here. I went back way too far. Just got the 24 hours. I really don't see it. And it was right here, right here. Yeah, so, you know, it opened up a little bit lower there and ba-boom. <laughs> and it just never looked back. And you can see no PLs along the way on the five, 15 minutes just gives a clear indication of the strength of, of that move. And so if we scroll back here onto the five minute where the market opened. It was a little weak and then wide range bore up and, you know, it never violated a, a pivot low here at the end of the day, the depth of retracement was uh, saying, Hey, maybe this thing rolls over, but nope, buying right into the close, you know, all in, all in. And so we see over the overnight uh, just flip flopping around, but you know, Spiders are up here, went up to 316, 317. So, you know, maybe, you know, it's, it is at some resistance here. We got a wide range reversal bar. Could it be a one, two, three? Or for this market, we were talking in the room yesterday. Look, we have to be open to all possibilities because there's no doubt that this is extended, but buyers are stepping up aggressively here. So the, the potential for, say an M top, even with a new high, or even for whatever reason, the prices don't continue to go up by 10 o'clock or so. Sometimes prices go down because they didn't go up. So uh, this is not a pattern that says, hey, you know, all in folks, you know, we're going, we're going to the roof, even though that's a possibility, you know, we put on some longs at the end of the day, but, um, you know, resistance is right here. 
You got a 4,200 number up there. Um, we shall see, McGraw. You know, we shall see. You know, those levels are going to be too strong, 4,150 to, to uh, 4,200 up there. So it was able to push through that initial level. And so just seeing if it can get back up to new highs. But with a reversal like this, you know, just forgetting the option implications and gamma levels and, and all of that, uh, this could, you know, as we look at this kind of a pattern, whereas here, down here, we would say that's going up, okay? I don't know whether it's a one, two, three, one, two, three, four, eight, nine, 12, whatever, pull back, whatever, pull back, wide range bar up, whatever is going to come after that, it's going up. Up here, it's like, well, cuckoo crazy market, risk off, nobody cares, blasts up through there to some other level. Uh, bear, a bear 180 reversal, maybe there's a void below. So there's that possibility. The way it went up, there's nothing to stop it from going down. Sideways trading range to whatever, you know, gamma implications are four or five days later or three days or five days later that dissipates. Same thing with our, what we call a three bar rule. We've got patterns that say, hey, they set up, this is it, press the button. Three days later, three five minute bars later, depending on the time frame you're looking at, it's like, hey, trader, um, just take a look here. Did you miss something? Everything's still looking okay. You know, be objective, don't be blindsided. So. As I'm saying here, you know, 4,200 may, may be a heavy level to get through. I mean, whole number saying gamma, whatever, um, being extended, right? So being extended in a reversal like this has smaller odds or lower odds of blasting off versus one that's closer to the moving average. We're just starting out of a base. So... You know, it, it's it's sort of a um, wait and see, well, kind of a tricky type of a pattern there. Right. Anyway, it's in an uptrend. Could it correct some more? Absolutely. Weekly's in an uptrend. Is it extended? Well, it's the most extended it's been since the coming. You know, the coming off of that correction low here. All right. So these are the kind of correction lows that we like to see where it forms a pivot and then the, it retests it and then a bullish one, uh, 180 right back up again. Not two days down and right back up to the high. This is, you know, the old the rational exuberance kind of price action. It's like uh, there's no risk by the dip, you idiot. Right. Well, how big is the dip? It doesn't matter. It went down. Just buy it. <laughs> so yesterday we were talking, hey, let's a dip down to the 20, we're down to the rising 20 MA and somewhere in this area would make a whole lot of sense as a swing trade in this congestion. So today it's like, you know, what do you mean? What do you mean? I mean, it was a, it was a down day. That, isn't that a dip? So um, there you have it. Uh, internals. Someone says about internals. We were hoping that a couple, a down day or more, would get things going, and and this would poke down to these lower levels. Never, you know, certainly not going to get to historically what's a low level, but down into these bands would be fine. And uh, you know, breath didn't push down, and the reversal yesterday, uh, the breath was actually quite good. You know. Being able to tag that red line up on one day is what you want to see on a big green day. So, you know, that's a positive. If you had this big green day and the breadth was, you know, down here near zero or a little higher, I'm saying, hmm, what's up with that? But, you know, there's breadth confirmation. So sentiment is right there. Doesn't really, not really telling us much of anything to help us here. Either way. All right. So we usually look at the transports last, but they didn't break out yesterday, but they did have a good day. So that's a positive, All right? They're a little extended. Uh, the Russell, nice big day, 
pushing up lots of mess directly to the left there. Well, it cleared this one, but as we look at the, uh, the futures, we can see it was kind of right there. I guess it, it, it attacked that the one time, you know, came up to here. So we can really forget about that. And then the next level here, it's, a, you know, retesting this. So it looks okay. Um, we got to consider the upside being limited with all of this over here, but Hey, it could keep going up toward here. So it's certainly not a, you know, all, all in scenario, but Hey, this was a breakdown bar broke below a pivot bullish 180 right back up again, still below the 50 uh, congestion there. So not firing here on all cylinders jump on board bullish 180 one down day on the dow one down day right it was a relatively large bar and ripped right back up again right up into this resistance area um just you know keep in mind and yesterday was yesterday was a good lesson that the biggest reddish ugly bar that says lower in a short-term extended market doesn't have to go down. And this was proof of that yesterday and it, proof and reinforcement of the void concept. How many fib lines, trend lines, VWAPs, hocus pocus clouds were in between here and here that just got blasted through like they didn't exist because they don't other than in your mind. Right? So there's nothing in between here and here, this little shelf, and it just went through it like a high knife through butter. So when you get to that next Fib VWAP, Elliott Wave, GAN steroid webinar, just turn it off. All right. NASDAQ, little extra selling there, but it turned on the gas and pushed up. It's into this resistance area here. And on the weekly chart, greater than 100% retracement. This is starting to bottom out here. All right, so what am I going to do here? Oh, I don't like red. If I'm, if I'm thinking that might go up, let's put the red up there. All right, so this on the five minute broke the downtrend line by trading above major resistance and it pulled back in with a wide bar and it flipped back up again. So a little short-term bullish price action, but look at where it's at. If I was getting this five minute down here, that would, that would have strong implications. Whereas this is, you know, let's just call it a dirty Harry trade. You know, do you feel lucky punk? How fast are you? Can, can you grab your coins? fast enough before the sellers reemerge. Anyway, it, it's a pattern. So any pattern in a smaller time frame, put it in the context of a bigger time frame, and you get a stronger view as to what the implications are. John saying to me, uh, it's to 41.20 to 41.10 SPX for tomorrow looks safe. Oh, an adventurer. Think about tomorrow. 4120 to 4110 as it looks safe. I can tell you probably around three o'clock today how safe it looks. But if it's up here, right, whatever the premiums are there now, I'm not going to exist at three o'clock. At the moment, it looks safe, but I don't know what's going to happen here in the first half hour. So you need to assess that. All right, we looked at the Russell. Right. Bonds are churning their way higher here. So the market's like that. Right. Sellers are going to show up at, in this again. Right. Downtrend, sideways trend, void up above. Right. At some point, if we see this pattern climactic kind of a buy, we say, well, maybe up near the 20, give or take, should be a sell setup. And what we would look for here on the daily chart is a double top, maybe an M top with 
what um, Dan and I talked about at MT Live yesterday. All right. Um, oil. I'm flip flopping around there. You know, the oil ETFs, I thought maybe they'd get a turnaround up. They got slapped down. So that that's gotten kind of messy. And uh, so, but we found some good stuff. Dan will share with you things that were breaking out on wide range bars. So and market wise, this market is tenuous. It, it, it goes from depression to happy days are here again, but we don't seem to fail to find something that's bringing up the rear or doing okay. So all yours now. All right. Yeah. Thanks. It's one for two. Yep. Yep. Thanks. Um, let me correct that. Thank you very much. Correct that real quick. In the post. 151.45. Done. Yeah, so we picked up a couple longs and yesterday afternoon. Yesterday morning was very interesting watching the bull bear fight and the bulls won. Um, so our opens are fine. Uh, yesterday, remember this VIAC sector looks like it's bottoming out and it could be related to, to the news of that they're blasting on TV again about uh, Credit Suisse taking another big old loss and they're having to raise capital now. Yeah. You know, that's what happens when you let one firm put you at risk for $20 billion. So if the, the one, one, you let leverage can blow you up as we all know. But I you know, I, who knows, maybe that had to do with now there's some more clarity. Um, there could be some clarity of, of, you know, the remaining positions and so forth, because whatever it was, that's that was a nice little top bar yesterday. So let's watch that sector. And um, yeah, yeah, we always wait five minute high. That's a ton of earnings here. And I, I went through and chopped out a bunch of them just for some time problems. Um, Thomas KHC, we talked about yesterday. We're already in it. Yeah, that's that's one of our longs. It looks fine. KGC, well, it's getting it's getting overbought. The gold sector. I think you missed your you missed it. Um, we had an we had an amazing trade on Kilo Lima, uh, the gap breakout, and sold right at the high yesterday into strength. Netflix question is. Reported yesterday, is there a chance to retest the after hour lows from Tuesday? There's a chance for anything. Of course. I mean, why? why? I mean, I, I don't even know how to answer that question. Of course, there's a chance for anything. This had a breakout and it failed, closed weak, and now it's in a coma. I, I, I jokingly called this a hanging chad yesterday. It's like, I don't know what you're going to do. Um, being a Wall Street darling, I thought it would have been more robust 30 minute high, but it, it didn't. So we need, we need more information. No, JR, I got no interest in buying um, gold right here. You, we've been talking about it for three days. Low bottoming pattern, that's fine. All right, AI, Michael in the room asked me about this. Bottoming pattern. Let's see the 20 MA is starting to curl, which is a good sign, I like the 15 minute uptrend. Uh, so sure, keep it on the list. Um, Dallas asked about Nokia. It's in a coma. And this surely looks like a Wall Street bets toy back here in January. That, that's their, that was their trademark. <laughs> and they, they, they made a lot of stocks look like that. Just set an alarm and see what it does. Rita, your drop down. Rita's asking about boozy. Yeah, yeah, the deep retracement, so you don't expect a new high. 
but I like the gap up, I like the strength, and I like the price void. So yeah, definitely, Rita. Definitely. Debbie, Sony. Is that really you, Debbie? I I never see you pre-market. Uh, Sony. Yeah, it's kind of a reverse heading shoulders on the 15. Gapping up, so it could be, yeah, yeah. It looks fine, day trade or swing, you got a price void. Plug, it's been in a nasty downtrend, but you, there's looks like there's some bottom fixtures here. FSR, let's see, somebody asked me this one yesterday. They said, hey, Dan, is this a, is this a good bottoming pattern? I'm like, well, I don't know. It's still in the nasty downtrend, and you, you got one green bar, but it's 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 a V bottom. It's not a bottoming pattern where the 20 MA flattens out like AI, and you see it here having an ugly gap down. So I got no interest in that. Yeah, IBB and XBI. Um, I want to watch both of these. Actually, let me also tell weekly options trader wait five minute high as with all with all trading um, tan this it could be a bottoming pattern um we sold a put spread on it today's thursday on tuesday's gap up and stupid thing stopped us out and that happens but it's still it's still worthy of a of a watch. Now it's look at that. Now it's gapping up two bucks. So that that's back on the list. It's back on on the list for a for a bottoming pattern. Let me put it in my binder over here. Um, Pat, I saw in the journal IPO yesterday. They they help. Um, AI robotics, they help companies make robots and it's valued at 38 billion based on yesterday's close. Now it's gapping up. So this IPO is, is getting some excitement. Here's another one, one bar, just like that other one we talked about, one bar of whether it's a V bottom, it's not a bottoming pattern but it's still still strong yeah debbie when i lived out there i woke up at, in california i woke up at 4 20 a.m every day so i could get to get to work at 5 30. uh this is not bad at all i don't know if this is earnings or why i have it here but it's trading range flattened out support nice breakout close this looks great i can't tell where it's opening dunking what's the question justin's asking about dunking but i don't know what the question is but it's garbage i mean that's just a nasty overlapping bars i have, I have no interest in that um it's asking about neo yeah we have this one posted already that's a classic symmetrical triangle bottoming pattern. Yeah, we, we've already given this one. We'll buy the five minute high. Nicker gapping down on earnings, but it's gapping at the 200 here and it's, it's far from the 20. The 30 minute high, that might be a put spread. This one, trading range, I can't tell where it's gapping. Dow was it was on my long list on the gap up this morning but now that's a big fat neutral credit suisse we talked about getting whacked slug no pattern slim shady that's a strong uptrend now that when when we use the term railroad tracks that those are railroad tracks Rising 20, rising 50, a beautiful 45 degree. That's amazing. That's a picture of buy every compelling pattern, whether it's a pullback, consolidation, uh, 180 reversal, whatever pattern. That's 
that's strong, slim shady. Look at this thing, gap in the 215, all time highs. Now this has also been a strong uptrend and it's not climactic. Uh, when, we, when we trade climactics, we wanna see the stock accelerate higher and get far from the 20. But it's still, when something gaps this big, um, 30 minute low could be a one DTE call spread. A deep retracement, but buy setup on support, gapping up, 30, 30 minute high. I like that. KMI was on my long list this morning. Now it's giving it up. We'll come back at 3.30. There was a number of airlines reporting today. Save, big fat trading range. But McGraw put spread yesterday's low. SNBR bearish gap. Uh, call spread, 30 minute low. Look at the, look at the monthly's climactic. That is, that is room to fall. Uh, 30 minute low, we'll come back to that. RHI, strong uptrend. Gap in all time highs, look at that, it's a beast. LDS, 30 minute low, call spread yesterday's high. <clears throat> See? But I would, I would, you know, maybe even 15 minute low, I don't know, but I'm just throwing some general things out. Diamonds actually pulling in a little hard here, pre-market, not pre-market, I mean, you know what I mean? CMG, range bound. They said people were sure ordering burritos online. That's when I saw a thing. Um, bullish gap, but uh, it's uh, range bound. McGraw, that would be a Condor candidate. CHDN, uh, Tesla. Yeah, I read in the journal today that they're saying Tesla, uh, Tesla, uh, people in China are really mad at them. But yeah, I like Tesla directional yesterday. Had a beautiful late day breakout. Um, LMT alarm. I have this as a as a day trade short plus call spread candidate. This was the one I was gonna post yesterday, but then I, I was off on the on the spreads, but a 10 minute low, you can day trade short LMT. Thanks Sebastian, your, um, your drop down Sebastian. Um, Boeing and John, maybe, maybe day trade long, 10 minute high. I always like to look at jets. Yeah, I think the, the gap up in jets is helping it. Look upper right, spiders, five minute chart. Daily's beautiful, one, two, three, if it closes here. But five minute chart, you know, it's all in here. LMT, this is, I like this as a short. You can just be spready. Yesterday, I wanted to do the 392s. Now they're bid zero. The 390s, 15 cents by $1.80. This guy's a comedian. Um, his, his name is Jack. Jack is the market maker. Uh, eight, wow, look at AT&T's gap. That is a huge gap. Uh, Detective, I, I did not give, I just said a long watch, um, but we sold a put spread. Sebastian said he got filled on it. Um, but in terms of a long, I don't know yet. Um, maybe, I don't know yet, maybe 10 minute high, I don't know. But it's, it's here, we're, we're watching it. WSO, nothing. Uh, 